174 pounds, DJ Washington. He's been impressive for the Hoosiers. And Emil Songlin, young Boilermaker, set to toe the line at 174 opposite Washington. And you saw that reaction of Angel Escobedo on the bench right there after that happened. Good shot by our guys that came through. He is looking for a momentum stopper. He didn't see this match or this meet going this way, and we'll see if uh, DJ Washington can be the guy to go ahead and stop that. Bonus points. Keep the hands legal. For Purdue. Walk it off, walk it off. Good double right there from Washington. He drives through, and he's up 2-0. Nice work there. You want to get that early takedown. You just don't want to you know, make, make the... Uh, Unranked wrestler thinks he's got a, has a chance in this one here, and that's just. You want to take away hope early, off. right, Jim? Exactly, you can. No, but you know these are college wrestlers; they're strong green. guys. They, they, Red, cover they have a will of their own, and, and uh, you know, Set. in most instances, particularly at the the higher level you go, it, it just takes a while to break it down. And I don't think that most times you don't break a guy, you just, you know, end up scoring more points, but you get your will going on it, and that's, you know, sometimes you just know you're going to be in matches where you're going to have to, uh, you know, the will won't be broken until maybe the last two or three seconds of the match or in overtime. It may never be broken, but you just got to go ahead and expect these type of, uh, in tournament wrestling, expect these type of matches. And what the guys this year haven't had is that, 14, Out. 15 uh, match or meet sequence here over six weeks where they get the, the number of matches and get themselves into kind of competition set, shape. Red cover. Uh, you know, a lot of the programs around the, the, you know, the conference have That's had stoppages, and, and so it's been uh, going to be a unique challenge. But they're green here. Set. We're not too Red. far away. Set. And uh, there's titles being offered up, Big Ten championships, and it's going to be a special one if you take one home. So here's a young man in Washington that couple losses on the season. Really a solid weight class in the conference. They all are. But you, know, you want to be high on that stand and build a build a base for your career. It starts in the Big Ten Championships. There's an escape. Washington ranked sixth at 174. Big Ten with six of the top seven. Michael Kimmer of Iowa and Mikey Labriola of Nebraska 1-2. Starachi of Penn State, Massa of Michigan, and Romero of Ohio State. Also, boy, the seeding, in the mix. The, yeah, the seeding again is it, just going to be uh, so so challenging with with Massa's loss it, it to Michigan to Starachi. Starachi likely to have the number three seed, and that sets up a camera uh, Massa match maybe in the semis potentially. Got a lot of wrestling before you get there, but. Uh, you know, just the one little loss like that, it just changes things up drastically. 35 seconds first period, Washington with the takedown and riding time over a minute. With the advantage here at 174. Again, the Big Ten Championships here on the Big Ten Network. We've never done it before. Talk about some of those great battles in the quarterfinals. We'll have them March 6th. Here on the Big Ten Network, of course, March 7th, cap things off with the championships. Well, the beautiful thing, Shane, about watching the quarterfinals and the semifinals, that, that, that you're going to see more programs represented. You're going to see more battles that I, I, I can always go back in my memory of watching. And I've mentioned this a few times on the shows previously in the Big Ten championships. Quarterfinals, Cash Caroga from... Uh, Purdue against Ramos against Tony Ramos. Yes, he had him down with <laughs> like two or three seconds like six 14 seconds left I think he might have been down for it by three. by two or three or whatever all Kroga has to do is just go ahead and hold the lead If Ramos gets beat right there, I don't know if he, he certainly doesn't win the big tens and he doesn't make may, may you know be a confidence thing here for the Nationals right? he, he, he tell, Tony probably tell you differently and he may not go on to become a world team member. <laughs> he was that. so tough because you think yeah. about Ramos, Jim, 
You mentioned the match with Kuroga. A couple more that stand out. One of the guys in this gym, we talked about AJ Shop. Yes. Shop had him dead to rights in the national semis. Tyler Graff one year had him dead to rights in the national semis. Tony Ramos yeah, was some out. kind of tough. Yeah, he pulled out a lot of matches, but one of them was in the, the quarterfinals that nobody expected would be that close. And that's where our fans are going to be able to get the chance to see. You see great wrestlers that have to battle through. And, and Tony Ramos is certainly that. NCAA champion, multi-time All-American, Big Ten champion, World Team member. So, you know, but, but having these great wrestlers in their final year, you know, they, they're doing the interview with Shane Sparks over there. In, in, in the break, they're saying, you know, I'm finally going to get my name on the wall. <laughs> That's it. Tony Ramos, I'll never forget it. That was in Madison. He came over. He took that sigh of relief. He goes, I'm finally going to be on that wall as a Big Ten champion. Uh, and it just starts with... Uh, we just we, we can't plug and promo it enough and to be able to see it you're going to see more uh, programs and teams represented and tough wrestlers and it's just not going to be the, the, the top teams and the top rated guys you look at the job nebraska's done of course schroeder and kendall coleman big 10 finalist a year ago ryan deacon of northwestern a big 10 champion cam caffey michigan state big 10 finalist a year ago yeah these guys get dangerous in that tournament Work center and then, and then two weeks later, it can be sometime at the NCAAs. It, 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 it rarely, when you have a tough conference like you do here, and you might see something in the conference in the NCAAs that, that might uh, totally flip. There you see AJ Shop right there. He was extremely, extremely tough. Great in the top position, as we mentioned, All American at Edinburgh as the second period comes to a close. And, and Sondland's in, in this thing, three to one. He's, uh, I think that's what that. Purdue bench is so excited about. They got an opportunity. They've done what they needed to do to keep this match tight. And right now, this, this next takedown here is going to decide. Riding time a non factor. Jim, you said something the other night that was fingers, very him. interesting. I asked you, who's the most dangerous guy heading into the NCAA championships? Just threw it out there. You had a really interesting response. It's usually the guy that finishes third place in the toughest conference in the country. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> well, I just, you know, you've got to remember that this, you're coaching out here. This season is a process. DJ Washington is learning something about himself here, and this process has gotten shortened. All right, which is going to provide for a heck of a lot more variable performance, I think, at the tournament. I might be wrong, but, you know, you just never know what type of conditioning everybody's going to be in once they get there, what the conditions were, Center, man. and what their mental state is going to be. And some guys may, be, may lose confidence in the, uh, in, the, in the Big Tens going into nationals. And so I always felt that the, that the guy that, uh, that, that finished third, you have to put your eyes on him, see where he is mentally, and... Closing out, everybody knows that the, the guy that wins this, the Big Ten tournament is a tough guy. But the guy that and finished probably going to be the number one seed, and more often than not. Yeah, more often than not, now going to be the number one seed. But that guy that finishes third may have learned something about himself that makes him real dangerous. Well, I like the way Sondland's coming out to Washington here. He's got a half minute to work with, trying to tie this thing up and Russell get a takedown and a ride out to do so. But, you know, maybe that loss is off their mind right now and they go into the tournament, and uh, that's why that guy that places third in the Big Tens is dangerous, in my opinion. Straight on double. I'll be careful not to get spun around. Washington able to tie up. Sonlin. Washington with a go behind. And it's a win for Washington, a decision. Here for the Hoosiers at 174, Indiana on the board.